I added Kona Sport to F1 2023, put all the settings to automatic, and simulated 10 seasons. How good will Kona Sport do in F1? Stay tuned to find out. My name is Chris. Welcome back to CF Racing and enjoy the video. <laughs> In 2023, it comes to no surprise that Max Verstappen has won the World Drivers' Championship, though he was not as dominant as he was in uh, this 2023 season, as he just won 10 races in a row uh, yesterday in Monza. Verstappen took 7 wins on the year to score 201 points to finish P1. Sergio Perez had 2 wins, 143 points to finish P2. Lewis Hamilton scored 94 points to finish P3. Charles Leclerc took 1 win, 92 points to finish P4. Fernando Alonso took 86 points to finish P5. George Russell scored 75 points and finish p6 carlos Sainz had 71 points to finish p7 esteban Ocon had a 45 points to finish p8 lando norris had 38 points to finish p line and lance stroll had 34 points and finished p10 honestly this top 10 is quite similar to what real life is probably going to be um in the driver's Stand in the constructor standings, Red Bull come out on top, no surprise, with Mercedes P2, Ferrari P3, Aston Martin P4, Alpine P5, McLaren P6, Williams P7, Haas P8, Connor Sport in their first ever season finished P9, which is not terrible, Alfa Romeo finished P10, and Alfa Tauri are in dead last. In the driver transfer market, Valtteri Bottas decides to retire from Formula 1. That moves Nick DeVries. He's back in Formula 1. He goes to Alfa Romeo. Lance Stroll goes to Alfa Tauri. Alexander Albon goes to Aston Martin. That's a pretty good driver lineup, Alonso and Albon. And we have Liam Lawson going to Williams. And in going into 2024, there is a regulation change to the chassis department. In 2024, Lewis Hamilton wins his first World Drivers' Championship of the simulation, and that makes him an eight-time world champion. And you'll see at the end of this season that he does end up retiring. Lewis Hamilton takes four wins, 148 points to finish P1. Max Verstappen takes five wins, 144 points to finish P2. Another great title fight between the two. George Russell takes one win, 100 points to finish P3. Alonso takes 88 points to finish P4, and I spelt Alonso wrong. Nice. Albon takes 87 points to finish P5. Great season for Aston Martin there. Um, Charles Leclerc takes 76 points to finish P6. Sergio Perez takes 70 points. What a horrible season from him with Verstappen in P2 with 144 points. And Sergio Perez had 70 points. He finished P7. Carlos Sainz had 67 points to finish P8. Lando Norris had 47 points and finished P9. And Oscar Piastri wasn't that bad. He took 38 points and finished P10. Mercedes win their first Constructors title of the simulation, followed by Aston Martin in P2. Like I said before, Alonso and Albon were a, are a great driver pairing. Red Bull finished P3, Ferrari P4, McLaren P5, Alpine P6. Connor Sport moves up to P7, good for them. Haas finished P8. Alpha Tauri finished P9, William finished P10, and Alpha Romeo are in dead last. In the driver transfer market, we got a lot going on this season with three retirees. We have Lewis Hamilton, obviously, as he won his eighth World Drivers Championship. Then we have both Haas drivers of Nico Hulkenberg and Kevin Magnussen retiring from the sport. That obviously leaves two open seats at Haas, where we have Pierre Gasly and Carlos Sainz pairing up together, with Sergio Perez going to Alpine, Oscar Piastri is going to Ferrari, Alexander Albon goes to Red Bull, Felipe Drugovic, the Aston Martin reserve driver, finally gets his chance at Formula 1 in Aston Martin, Ayumu Owasa actually goes to McLaren, and Frederick Vesti gets straight called up from F2 to go to Mercedes. We got a good youth movement this season in uh, Formula 1, that's really cool. And heading into 2025, there is a regulation change to the durability departments. In 2025, George Russell has won his first ever World Drivers' Championship as he takes four wins on the year, 152 points to finish P1. And yes, these are all 10 race seasons because making it 10 races makes it super close. Alexander Albon takes two wins, 138 points to finish P2. Great season for him in the Aston Martin. No, he's in the... He beat Verstappen in the, the Red Bull. I didn't even notice. Max Verstappen takes three wins, 122 points to finish P3. Vesti scored 96 points to finish P4 in that Mercedes. Charles Leclerc takes takes 91 points to finish P5. Piastri takes one win, 85 points to finish P6. Piastri's honestly already on the level of Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris here. That's awesome. Lando, um, 
Fernando Alonso takes 76 points to finish P7, Akon takes 67 to finish P8, Sergio Perez takes 59 points to finish P9, and Felipe Drugovic scores 51 points to finish P10. Red Bull win their second Constructors title of the simulation, followed by Mercedes P2, Ferrari P3, Alpine P4, Aston Martin P5, McLaren P6, Haas P7, Connorsport P8, Williams P9, Alpha Tauri P10, and Alfa Romeo in dead last. In the driver transfer market, Lance Stroll goes back to Aston Martin. That moves Liam Lawson to Alpha Tauri, and Felipe Drugovic goes to Williams. And heading into 2026, there is no regulation change. In 2026, Max Verstappen is back on top as he takes 6 wins, 178 points, and dominated to finish P1. Alexander Albon takes 3 wins, 150 points to finish P2. George Russell takes 112 points to finish P3. Piastri takes 1 win, 108 points to finish P4, and he beat Charles Leclerc this season. Charles Leclerc takes 86 points to finish P5. Vesti scored 82 points to finish P6. Alcon scored 67 points to finish P7. Fernando Alonso, 62 points to finish P8. Sergio Perez, 54 points to finish P9. And and Lando Norris, 47 points to finish P10. Red Bull win their third Constructors title of the simulation, followed by Mercedes P2, Ferrari P3, Alpine P4, Aston Martin P5, McLaren P6, Connor Sport move up to P7, Haas P8, Williams P9, Alfa Romeo P10, and Alfa Tauri in dead last. In the driver transfer market, Fernando Alonso finally decides to retire from Formula 1, and to take his spot at Aston Martin, we have Sergio Perez as he goes back to the what was Force India days. Uh, Carlos Sainz goes to Alpine, and Jack Dewan as a rookie goes to Haas. And going into 2027, we have a major regulation change to aero, chassis, and power, so this will probably be a little crazy grid heading into 2027. Like I said before, it was a crazy grid, and Sergio Perez has won his first ever World Drivers' Championship. It's Aston Martin completely nailed the regulation changes. Perez takes 9 wins out of 10, 224 points to finish P1. Logan Sargent actually wins a race for Williams as he scores 167 points to get 1 win to finish P2. Lance Stroll scores 90 points. What a terrible season he had, by the way. Perez, his teammate, scored 224 points. Lance Stroll scores 90. Like, wow, wow, that's bad. Uh, Lance Stroll scores 90 points to finish P3. Only if Alonso stayed on for one more season, guys, he would have won the title. Alcon, 67 points to finish P4. Drugovic, 70 points to finish P5. Carlos Sainz, 67 points to finish P6. Aiden Jackson scores 60 points to finish P7. George Russell, 54 to finish 8th. Lando Norris, 47 points to finish P9. And Awasa, 45 points to finish P10. It looks like Awasa is now on Lando Norris's level. Aston Martin win their first ever World Constructors Championship with Williams P2, Alpine P3, and Connor Sport P4. What a top four. This is probably the craziest top four I've ever had in a simulation. Mercedes finished P5, followed by McLaren P6. Red Bull dropped down to P7. Alpha Tauri finished P8. Ferrari dropped down to P9. Haas P10. And Alfa Romeo in dead last. And as you can tell, the Red Bull power units and the Ferrari power units not having a very fun time. You love to see it. In the driver transfer market, Esteban Ocon goes to Red Bull. Max Verstappen goes to Alpine. Charles Leclerc goes to Williams. Wow. And Logan Sargent goes to Ferrari. And going into 2027, there is, and going into 2028, there is no regulation change. Heading into 2028, Sergio Perez is still on top of Formula 1 as he takes 5 wins, 148 points to finish P1. Aston Martin, pretty good season for them once again. Verstappen took 3 wins, 140 points, and finished P2. Carlos Sainz takes 2 wins, 111 points to finish P3. Lance Stroll takes 96 points to finish P4. George Russell, 86 points to finish P5. Lando Norris, 80 points to finish P6. Frederick Vesti, 75 points to finish P7. Not bad. Awasa, 74 points to finish P8. He beat Lando Norris this no, he did not. Sorry. Um, Charles Leclerc, 66 points to finish P9. And Esteban Ocon, 59 points to finish P10. Alpine win their first ever uh, World Constructors Championship. Good for them as they finish P1. Aston Martin finished P2, followed by Mercedes P3. McLaren P4. Williams P5. Red Bull P6. Connorsport P7. Ferrari P8. Alfa Tauri P9. Haas P10. And Alfa Romeo in dead last. And after, and after winning two World Drivers Championships, Sergio Perez decides to go out on top as he retires. That moves Max Verstappen to Aston Martin. Charles Leclerc takes Verstappen's spot at Alpine. Alpine, Frederick Vesti goes to McLaren, Awasa goes to Mercedes, and Yuri Vips goes to Williams. And heading into 2029, there's a regulation change to the power and durability departments. In 2029, Esteban Akon has won his first ever 
World Drivers Championship as he takes four wins on the year, 124 points to finish P1. Charles Leclerc takes three wins, 120 points, and he had a great title fight with Akon, but he finishes P2. Carlos Sainz takes one win, not 100, not 12. Uh, he takes one win, 116 points to finish P3. Albon takes one win, 110 points to finish P4. Piastri takes 76 points to finish P5. Sargent 68 points to finish P6. Gasly took 65 to finish P7. George Russell 56 to finish P8. Zhou Guangyu 45 points. Good season for him to finish P9. And Jack Dewan scores 43 points and finishes P10. Alpine win their second consecutive constructors title, followed by Red Bull P2 and Ferrari P3. And it looks like the two top teams pretty much are back on top. Haas finished P4, followed by Mercedes P5. What a season from Haas, by the way. Good for them. Alfa Romeo finished P6, and as you can tell, the Ferrari engine teams have a resurgence now for some reason. Then we have Alfa Tauri, McLaren, Aston Martin dropped seven spots to finish P9, Williams finished P10, and Connor Sport finished dead last, and I'm not sure if you can tell on this, but the Williams, Aston Martin, McLaren, even Connor Sport, all the Mercedes engine teams were terrible. In the driver transfer market, Alexander Albon retires from Formula 1. That moves Pierre Gasly to Red Bull and Teo Porsche to Haas. And heading into 2030, there is no regulation change. In 2030, Ocon becomes a two-time World Drivers' Champion as he takes five wins on the year, 176 points to finish P1, and we have an Esteban Ocon and a Pierre Gasly driver lineup at Red Bull. Gasly takes four wins, 152 points to finish P2. Piastri takes one win, 105 points to finish P3. George Russell takes 88 points, P4. Logan Sargent takes 85 points to finish P5. Charles Leclerc takes 74 points to finish P6. Carlos Sainz takes 65 points to finish P7. Awasa scores 59 to finish P8. Max Verstappen scores 55 points to finish P9. And Lando Norris scores 52 points to finish P10. In the Constructors' Championship, Red Bull come out on top for their fourth of the simulation, followed by Ferrari P2 and Mercedes P3. Alpine finished P4, followed by Aston Martin, McLaren, Connor Sport, Williams, Haas P9, Alfa Romeo P10, and Alfa Tauri in dead. Last, in the driver transfer market, Carlos Sainz decides to retire. That moves Clement Novelak to Mercedes. Yuki Sonoda goes to Alpine. Max Verstappen goes back to Alpha Tauri, where it all began. Dennis Hauger goes to Aston Martin, and Awasa ends up as a free agent. And going into 2031, there is a regulation change to Aero. In 2031, Esteban Ocon becomes a three-time World Drivers' Champion as he takes seven ones on the year, 201 points to finish P1. Pierre Gasly takes three wins, 174 points to finish P2. George Russell takes one win. George Russell takes 102 points to finish P3. Piastri scores 86 points to finish P4. Sargent 83 points to finish P5. Looks like we have a pretty good Ferrari driver lineup of Sargent and Piastri being basically on par with each other. Novelak scores 80 points to finish P6. Stroll scores 65 to finish P7. Lando Norris scores 58 points to finish P8. Yuki Tsunoda scores 50 points to finish P9. And Charles Leclerc scores 48 points to finish P10. Red Bull win their fifth of the simulation, followed by Mercedes P2, Ferrari P3, Aston Martin P4, McLaren P5, Alpine P6, Williams P7, Haas P8, Connor Sport P9, Alfa Romeo P10, and Alfa Tauri in dead last. In the driver transfer market, Ocon and Gasly both retire from Formula 1. That leaves two open seats at Red Bull, and we have Lando Norris and Yuri Vips taking those seats. Clement Novelak goes to Williams, followed by Verstappen going to McLaren. Enzo Fittipaldi goes to Alfa Tauri, and Richard Vashore goes to Mercedes for the final season. And heading into the final season of 2032, there is no regulation change. In 2032, we have Lando Norris on top of the world of Formula One as a Red Bull driver as he takes six wins on the year, 157 points to finish P1. Oscar Piastri takes two wins, 122 points to finish P2. And Logan Sargent takes two wins, 100 points to finish P3. George, um, Yuri Vip, George Russell takes 87 points to finish P4, followed by Yuri Vips, 64 in P5. Yugi Tsunoda, 62 in P6. Charles Leclerc's 58 in P7. Richard Richard Vershore scores 52 to finish P8. Max Verstappen scores 50 points to finish P9. And Frederick Vesti scores 44 points to finish P10. Ferrari win their first Constructors title since 2008. Wow. It's been over 20 years. That's unreal. With Red Bull in P2, Mercedes P3, Alpine P4, McLaren P5, Connor Sport P6. They were kind of mid in this simulation, I have to say. Aston Martin P7, Alfa Romeo P8, Haas P9, Williams P10, and Alfa Tauri in dead last. So now, guys, let's take a look at the final stats for all 10 years. 
and at the end of all 10 years. This is really what happened. Red Bull won five constructors titles, Alpine won two, Mercedes, Aston Martin, and Ferrari all won one constructors title. And you kind of like to see it, five different teams winning dry world constructors championships in five seasons. Speaking of five, we have Esteban Ocon winning three world drivers championships, Verstappen had two, Hamilton had one, I believe not two, Sergio Perez had two, and Lando Norris had one. Once again, very interesting, five different championships in five seasons, I believe Verstappen had three, not two, and Hamilton had one, not two. And in terms of wins, Verstappen had 24, Perez had 16, Alcon had 16, Gasly had seven, Norris had six, Albon had six, Piastri had five, Russell had five, Charles Leclerc had four, Carlos Sainz had four, Hamilton had four, and Logan Sargent had three wins. If you guys did enjoy this simulation, let me know in the comment section down below, as it was kind of a mid-simulation for Connor Sport. I think the highest they finished was fourth and one big regulation change season, but that's about it. So they were kind of mid in Formula 1. I'm probably going to be doing Andretti next, so stay tuned for that. There will be a little bit of cutscenes in that as well, as I was able to film like a couple uh, championship scenes here, because there were some really good title battles. If you're excited for that, stay tuned, hit the like button, subscribe, join the Discord, and uh, share this with your friends, and I'll see you guys next time.